afternoon, Brian Tong here, and welcome to Googleicious for all the Google goodness that we can pack inside of a show each week. Let's get to it, and everyone is talking about Google's self-driving car they unveiled for the first time at CodeCon. It's their first prototype car designed from the ground up with no steering wheel, no brakes, and the push of a button will take you where you want to go. Oh, isn't that cute? Yes, it's very cute, and it's just amazing to see how this project has developed so quickly in just a few years. Now, the Googs have started building 100 of their electrical experimental vehicles. The cars would be summoned by using a smartphone application, and it will be able to automatically pick you up and then take you to your destination. And again, this is just amazing. And the other big, semi-big announcement was the official unveiling of LG's G3 flagship phone that looks to compete directly with the Galaxy S5 and the HTC One M8. Now, this beauty features a 5.5-inch quad HD resolution screen at a 2560 by 1440 resolution for 538 pixels per inch. That's what's up, and this thing just looks so sassy. Now, it has a micro SD card slot for up to 128 gigs of additional storage and a 13 megapixel camera with ultra HD video recording and a feature they call laser autofocus. Now, that uses laser technology to measure the distance between the camera and the subject you're shooting for a fast focus. It will be running Android 4.4.2 KitKat out of the box and has a clever case of their own with their quick circle feature to access commonly used apps with the case still on the phone. It goes on sale in South Korea on May 28th with a worldwide release to follow sometime after that. And I'm loving how these companies continue to innovate differently from each other. All right, last week we talked about all Google's latest acquisitions and a new report from The Information says the Googs is planning to move into the home security market and is considering acquiring Dropcam, the makers of the popular camera system that streams live footage directly to your phones and computers. It's what Brian Cooley uses to watch his cats at home for uncomfortably long, long stretches of time. Oh, kitty. Now, the report says the status of negotiations is unclear, so this could just be a pure rumor, but it's intriguing because it could be Google's second company in the home automation space after their acquisition of Nest, and it's really a new market that's still trying to figure itself out. Okay, rumors surrounding YouTube bringing a music streaming service have been swirling as far back as October from a Billboard report. But according to the New York Times, the online video giant has run into licensing troubles with indie labels, specifically less enticing streaming deals compared to agreements with Universal, Sony, and Warner. Now, the members of the Worldwide Independent Networks posted a letter of their complaints, including YouTube threatening to block all the music on Indy's official YouTube channels if they do not agree to the current terms, and YouTube would also prevent them from collecting revenues from videos that use their music. Come on, Google, don't be evil. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the service has been reported to launch later this year, but we'll see how this might all affect that. All right, Samsung has released two smartwatches to the market with a less than lukewarm reception, but they aren't finished after Sammy today revealed a recent patent filing that shows a gesture-controlled wearable device with a round screen interface. The patent filing also shows the different placements that you could possibly wear this, ranging from a necklace to your chest, to your arm, to your hand up on your hip. When I dip, you dip, we dip. All right, I'll stop that. Now, these patent filings aren't always indicators that this is exactly what we'll see in the future, but we know Samsung still isn't finished here after the Wall Street Journal reports that the Korean giant is going to announce, guess what, another smartwatch this summer. Now, the big difference with this one is that it will act as a standalone device that will have its own SIM card, so you'll be able to make calls without being connected to a smartphone. I'm sorry, but Samsung has already killed any excitement that they could bring in the smartwatch market after two huge fails that were clearly rushed out, and then they still want us to pay attention with their third smartwatch model in less than a year? Eh eh, not having it. But if there's any smartwatch that really has my interest at all, it's the Moto 360, a smartwatch that actually looks like a fashionable watch. Now we've seen the concepts and we're expecting the real deal this summer, but just to keep the momentum going, Motorola started a contest and is letting the community submit watch face designs ahead of the launch. Now you can get all the details at the link on the screen, and this contest ends on June 24th, and they'll be giving away one Moto 360 to the submission that's selected as the winner. 
Now the community is really coming up with some great stuff ranging from this wood pattern. This one looks pretty cool too. And there's also a Tron theme, but I decided to do a little work on my own. And let's be honest, you're looking at the winner right here. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. Email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys next week for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.